Uh, it was a difficult game because they score in bunches yeah. and they constantly put pressure on you because they're so good in transition. They're so good at getting to the foul line uh, and they're very good on the offensive glass. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they were a very good team. You know, I know Marietta technically got upset, but yeah. it's, it's a dis... It, it, a lot of teams. Gwen, Gwen deserves credit. They are very, yeah. very good. They're, you know, if this was a matchup of a 2-15 game between Marietta and them, they're a lot better than that type of team. I mean, yeah. they, they can really score. They can play with a lot of people. Um, so this was a very good win for us. It seemed like you slowed them down just a little bit. And they were, they'd go up tempo a few times on the offense, but they, they couldn't control the entire tempo of the game. Was that the game plan? Uh, no, we, I, I think the, the, thing that, the two things we tried to stress, and when I was at Keystone, I coached against John for yeah. four years, so there was a little bit of a familiarity there. Right. One of the, and, and when John's teams are very, very good, which they are this year, they really create easy opportunities. Mm. So our biggest thing was we had to create easy opportunities and then we had to take care of the ball and try as best we could to make it a five on five game instead of a game in transition, a game off the offensive glass or with freebies on the foul line. Um, you know, we didn't take, do a great job in transition, but we did keep them off the foul line. And you know, when you win by one point, we got one of the phases done, and that just we were fortunate that that happened to be enough. You held Daryl Artis to, to, to six points. I mean, he went off for what 29, I think it was against Marietta. You held him to six. The two three certainly seemed to be pretty good. Was it just that you the zone was working perfectly enough to slow him down? Was what was it about that you were able to take advantage of to stop him? I'm not sure. I you know the one thing that is effective for us in our zone is we do have good length on the perimeter. Our shortest guy that we play is 6'3", so maybe we just pushed him out of his comfort zone a step more away from the basket. Maybe he just had a bad shooting night, sure. which is probably it. So I don't know if we deserve credit for that, but um, you know he, he certainly was a key factor uh, in us having to win the game was to hold him in check a little bit. Quick game. This thing was done in less than 90 minutes. Uh, I, I had to look at the clock a couple times, but the last couple of minutes after the last timeout at a roughly, I want to say 220, I think there might have been a timeout after that, but the last minute, nobody called timeout. It was a not a free-for-all, but an up and down. Were you tempted at any point after they made the free throws, after you made the what turned out to be the game winner, to or, or any time in between that, to stop it and reset? Uh, no, uh, I just I we tell our guys that it's part of the reason we practice is we go through these types of situations like a lot of coaches do, um, and you know we have a really good point guard and I feel comfortable with the ball in his hands mm. and with his decision making. Uh, Brian, just good things seem to happen when the ball's in his hands. If you call timeout in that situation, there's always a chance that the other coach could double team him yeah. and not allow him to get the ball. So I felt like that was the best thing in that particular situation. Um, and then I actually thought I agreed with what John did too. I mean, there's so many plays that yeah. end up in a scramble situation at the end of games. And they got a great look. It just happened to not go in. So I asked, I asked uh, Brian this just earlier. When did it sink in that you guys had won? Because that first off, the sh jumper looked like it had a. I mean, it did have a good chance oh, yeah. of going in. There's no question. And then the question is, did it get off before the buzzer or not? Then the second thing is, it just seemed like everybody just kind of stopped for a second, going, "Wait, game's over." Yeah, yeah. It, it when was, did it sink in? Well, I think. Uh, once I saw the referees running off the floor, maybe I, I don't know. I, yeah. You know, we have been. Uh, it's not. Uh, we have been on the other side of that, two or three times this year, where it was just very uh, hard to go talk to the team after the game because yeah. we had lost on a buzzer beater or a very difficult shot at the end of regulation. So, I just was ecstatic that it worked out in our favor this time. That would have been a tough conversation to walk into the locker sure. room afterwards. And you know, especially not, after leading most of the game. Yeah, and 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 not to discredit, you know, John's kids played with a tremendous amount of heart, and they were very deserving as well to win the game. It just happened there was one more play yeah. made by us. So they deserve, Gwyneth deserves a lot of credit.